In this short video, we are going to derive the formula that is needed to calculate the range in projectile motion. As a recap, projectile motion is the trajectory that an object follows when it is catapulted into the air with an initial velocity v0 and with only gravity acting on it, pulling it back down. In this setting, the range is the difference in position from where the object started at launch and where it reaches the ground again. Now the derivation is very similar to deriving the formula for the time of flight, which I did in a previous video. And similarly, the only thing that you really need to know by heart is the kinematics equation. So let's get into it. Our starting point will be the kinematics equation, which is basically an equation that tells you the trajectory of a point given its initial position and velocity and a constant acceleration. The position x at some point t is equal to its initial position x0 plus its initial velocity times t plus one half times the acceleration times t squared. The next step is to realize that we have two dimensions here. We have an x direction parallel to the Earth's surface and we have a perpendicular y direction. And because we have two dimensions, we will also have two kinematics equations, one for each dimension. V0 here gets a superscript x to indicate that it is the initial velocity in the x direction. And the acceleration will also be the acceleration in the x direction. Now we can just write down the same equation in the y direction. So we have the initial position in the y direction, y0, plus our initial velocity in the y direction, multiplied by t, plus one half multiplied by our acceleration in the y direction, multiplied by t squared. Now we can already reduce these equations quite a bit, because for instance, we say that we start out here in the origin of our coordinate axis, meaning that x0 and y0 can be put to zero. Also, because we know that there will not be an acceleration in the x direction, this a of x drops out, and as a consequence, this entire term drops out. For the acceleration in the y direction, we know that it will be due to the force of gravity. So this ay will be simply be equal to minus g, the gravitational acceleration in the negative y direction. Thus, we can rewrite our equations in a more simple form. We have x of t, which is equal to simply the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by t. And likewise, for y of t, we simply get the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by t minus one half multiplied by g multiplied by t squared. And it will be these two simplified equations that we will now use to derive the formula to calculate the range. So how do we now get the formula for the range from these two equations? We remind ourselves that the range is the difference in x position between these two points the points where we start off and the point where we reach the ground again. And this first equation basically tells us how this x position changes with time. So it's this one that we'll be looking for. However, we see that in this equation, we only have this variable t to work with. Therefore, in order to find the range, we need to find the time it takes for the object to reach the ground again. And to find this time, we realize that these two points that define our range are actually two very special points, because only in these two points will our y coordinate be exactly zero. And this is where the second equation will come in, because it will be this equation that will give us a time t for which the y coordinate is equal to zero. Let's recap the strategy here. In order to find the range, we need to find the difference in x position between the points where y is equal to zero. So the points where our object is at the ground. Because from our kinematic equations, we find that x of t is equal to our initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by a time t. The thing that we're looking for now is the time t for which y is equal to zero. So the time between our launch and our reaching the ground again. And to find this in turn, we will use the second kinematics equation in the y direction. Concretely, we need to find a specific time t for which our y of t is exactly equal to zero. Now we see that in this equation, we can already 
cancel out one power of t in each term, which leaves us with a very straightforward linear equation in t. We find that 0 is equal to v0 in the y direction minus 1 half g times t. Rewriting this as a function of t, we find that t is equal to 2 times the initial velocity in the y direction divided by g. At this point, we have found the time duration between when the object leaves the ground and comes back again, which we can then plug in back into our equation for x and thus get the range. This gives us the following. We get that x of t, which in this case is our range r, is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by t, and t is 2 times the initial velocity in the y direction divided by g. Now of course we still need to find an expression for this initial velocity in the x and in the y direction, because the only thing that we're given is the magnitude of our initial velocity. To find this let's go back to our sketch. We see that our initial velocity makes an angle theta with the horizontal plane, which makes it very easy to find its component in the x and y direction. In the y direction it will simply be the sine of theta multiplied by v0, and in the x direction it will of course simply be the cosine of theta multiplied by v0. So that's very easy to fill in. Therefore we get that our range is equal to 2 multiplied by v0 times the cosine of theta, which is v0x, multiplied by v0 times the sine of theta, which is v0 in the y direction, divided by our gravitational constant g. We see that this can be written as 2 times v0 squared multiplied by the cosine of theta multiplied by the sine of theta divided by g. Now we can use a goniometric formula here since we have 2 times the cosine of theta multiplied by the sine of theta which we know to be the sine of 2 theta. And so we can reduce our formula even more and we find a final result that our range r is equal to v0 squared times the sine of 2 theta divided by g. And this is our final formula to calculate the range of an object in projectile motion. And with that we've come to the end. If you have any questions leave a comment in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.